Good evening, OGs, original Grizzlies. Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly Books True Crime. I'm live with you tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello, everyone. Let me know where you are from in the world. Where are you hanging today? Where are you watching me from? I haven't made a poll for you yet. <laughs> I should have made a poll for you. Hold on one second, please. And please let me know if you can hear me. Can you hear me properly? A thumbs up if you can hear me um, and if my sound is good, because sometimes you let me know that it isn't. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Yes, welcome to all the new members. I hope you enjoy the videos. Um, today, I had a lot of fun going on a cycle and showing all my members the Netherlands on bicycle. Yep, yep, I did. So let's just quickly open this page here. Okay, you're giving thumbs up. You can hear me. So that's good. I feel like I'm frozen now. Am I good? Okay, let's run a poll just real quick. Do you? I'm going to run a poll while I wait for some of you to roll in. Do. Okay. I'm running a poll for you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, mods, for being here. I really appreciate you. Um, let's see. You guys are carving up the likes as well. Thank you so much for that. So tonight we are going to have another look at the case of Kylan and Crystal. Now, that case is still an unsolved murder case. Um, still no suspects, still no leads. I know that a lot of you suspect that Brian Laundrie may have been involved. However, the private investigator on this case said it's very unlikely that it's him. But you never know. There's always that possibility. Let me just make sure I'm keeping up with your messages. The Facebook site? What Facebook site are we talking about? Bonbons? Let's carve it right up. Carve it up. Okay, you guys are... <laughs> Okay. Sorry, I'm getting started now. I'm getting into it. I'm just checking what's that everything. Every now and then it looks like I freeze up. Do I freeze up? Uh, hi from Ottawa, Canada. Love the channel so much. You're doing a great job. Thank you so, so much. So I've covered this case once before. There was an episode. If you haven't seen it yet, please do check it out. Uh, I wonder also if my light will be better on or off. I don't know. Hold on. Okay. Illuminated. We love the light. I'm also thinking maybe... What, like a, a serial killer? Possibly in the area. There's a lot of bodies showing up in the area. Nikki, you say you want to be a mod for me. Um, we can look at that maybe for 2022. For now, I'm pretty good. I've got a big team. <laughs> I like hearing your thoughts, so please keep sharing your thoughts. So what I've got here, I've got so many notes. I've been down this rabbit hole for a few days now. Um, could it have been Robert Lowry? Wow, now there's a theory grizzly in hawaii okay cool please tell me if i freeze up every now and then because on my screen i freeze up every now and then and i don't know why anyway okay so just hold on let's go like this let's close this so kylan and crystal that is the case we're looking at right the murders of Kylan Carol Schulte and Crystal Beck Turner. So Crystal Beck is actually how they know her. But we all have heard her say Crystal Turner, right? So her maiden name, I believe, was Beck. I am freezing up every now and then. That's weird. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, okay. So... The murders are still an open investigation. Please remember that when you make comments, the family are often watching the media shared about their loved ones, and we need to make sure that we keep the comments kind and respectful. A private investigator, Jason Jensen, who's done quite a few interviews, I've been trying to get hold of him, um, has been assigned to the case. Please contact him if you have any information. His number is 1-801-759-2248. If you are like what it's in the description box below you can just uh, copy that if you need to call him if you have any information 
They're especially looking for anyone with information that may have been in the area on the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, something like that, in Moab, that saw anything, photos, people in the background, anything. So as we know, Brian Enton is in Moab right now, retracing the steps of Kylan and Crystal, as well as of Gabby and Brian. Hello, carve it up, everyone. But I thought there was no murders then. All of a sudden, <laughs> we have 10, right? It's a bit odd, right? There's apparently absolutely no link to this John Freeman cult, whose Facebook name was John Holt. No connection. The authorities and the private investigator have ruled that option out. So even I, when I read that, I'm like, okay. Okay, you say this happens on other channels. I think it's not you. Weird. The freezing, huh? Dallas, Texas, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> Brian Enton says, Tanya, don't want to talk at all. <laughs> Moab is a very small community. It's a very small and special community. You know, it, it was a dream to live there, I guess. I've got some friends that live there and they show me around. You know, they tell me all about it. And it's so nice to hear all about it. But they are shook right now. They are really upset about what happened and really scared. You say, you are a class act, New Brunswick, Canada. Thank you so much, Angela. <laughs> Is that your name, Angela? Butful one. <laughs> cool name, cool name. No one is talking. It really sucks. So I don't know. The best we can do is talk about it here on YouTube and hope that anyone who's like, oh, my word, I was actually in Moab at that time. Let me look at my footage. You know, like the Red, Whites and Bethune case where they're like, oh, my word, I was there. Let me just go check my footage. Oh, my word, we saw Gabby's van, right? You just never know. They're also busy looking up for satellite imagery to see if maybe they could find any information, even the color of the car that may have been there. Nothing came from the wedding that happened just up the road. Absolutely nothing. Um, I don't know why I put my mic on my notebook now because I need to use my notebook. So <laughs> bear with me while I move my mic around. Okay. Welcome to all the new members. I hope you enjoy the content there. What I make on there uh, is, is more personal stuff. It's just cycling, touring around the Netherlands, showing you stuff about my my cat or just stuff. It's not it's not like uh, over here we just do pure true crime, you know, but over there it's a little more personal. I've got some cola tonight, so cheers to you. Thank you for joining me on this late Friday night. For me, it's 12.08 a.m., so it's Saturday morning for me, essentially. It's just past midnight. Big bubbles. Okay. Hello. Yes, yes, like it. <laughs> I say thank you for supporting this channel and remember to please subscribe. If you are watching and not subscribed yet, please remember to subscribe. Hit the bell so you get all things Grizzly Books True Crime. So I'm sorry that I'm looking over there the whole time. My notes are over there. Um, Kylan Carol Schulter was from Billings, Montana, and she was 24 years old, only 24 when she was murdered by an unknown suspect. Her wife, Crystal Turner, made a name Beck, was 38 years old, and she was from Hot Springs, Arkansas. Not Arkansas, I've learned. Hi from Tennessee. Hello, everyone. It's so nice to see you here. 6 p.m. here. Perfect time, right? 6 p.m. on a Friday night. Cola, soda, or pop? Um, Coca-Cola? It's, um, I don't know. So you say soda or pop. To me, that sounds like the same thing. I'm from South Africa, so I don't know. But it's Coca-Cola. <laughs> Mia Sarah. I don't know who that is, but I'm going to look it up. 3 p.m. on the West Coast. It's so nice to have you guys here. You're a wonderful community. I really like having you. I hope you like the background. It's just cool, calm, white serenity <laughs> while we cover horrendous cases because we need that contrast just like just remain chilled everyone keep it grisly we can do this you know sometimes you discover some horrendous things when looking at cases and you're just like so hectic so um i know you like it was a hectic kylan attended high school in montana and once she had graduated she worked as a welder for a while let me put the picture of them up actually hold on one second There we go. And the little bunny. Shame. The little bunny Ruth. All right. 
Soda. Okay. <laughs> soda it is. I don't know what pop is. Is it that, that like soda stream machine? I don't know. Um, soda. Okay. So in 2015, Kylan's brother was shot by one of his friends. So we can't quite say murder because it was a mistake. I'll tell you about that in a moment. Gary Warner, thank you so much for your support. You guys know I appreciate everything. If you know what my goal is in life, you know, my dreams for one day, you can just, in the membership, I tell you a lot more about that. Like, you know, what do I want to achieve one day? So thank you so much for all your support for this channel. Thank you for everything. You guys are amazing. Okay. So in 2015, her brother was shot by one of his friends, which was a tragic accident. So apparently, I know I'm like... <laughs> peeping over here I just don't want to I want to respect their picture here you know I want to keep the picture up but I'll make myself slightly bigger um apparently he went over to his friend's house and he was trying to wake his friend up so I'll look at your message now Bruce um so that he could go and play he was like hey come on wake up and play and I don't know the guy was very anxious he had a gun with him to protect himself and he thought it was an intruder and shot Kylan's brother Bruce Wayne says, what email can I use to send an Amazon gift card to? Keep up the good work. That one, you might need to, uh, I have an Amazon account, but it's not on any of the emails that I've listed here. So if you could email me on grizzlybookstruecrime at gmail.com. That would be great. All right, all right. Let's see. Wow, you guys, I've got it on subscribers only mode and slow mode, and it's still like, whoa. I love the shirt that says keep it grizzly. Well, thank you so much. Welcome to Rochelle Pronzo. No one is mentioning that gun anymore. I know, right? I'm still looking up what is that gun all about. Uh, one of the grizzly subs actually sent me a picture saying that the twine on the gun matched the twine found at the campsite of Cullen and Crystal. So that's interesting. But I wonder... I wonder what will come of that gun. Like, what is going to happen with it? Hello, Jennifer. Nice to see you. Yeah, find out when Brian went and went to Moab to find things out. It's pretty cool, right? Thank you so much to Rochelle. We love Grizzly. Keep it classy. Just like Gizla. <laughs> Thank you so much. And welcome to Lieutenant Peter Pronzo as well. The best carver on any channel. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're carving it up tornado style. <laughs> So I've got so many, I've got notes, I've got things over there. So what I wanted to say was that um, Kylan's dad actually said in an interview that Kylan had been abused in the home that she grew up in with her brother. So I don't know if that would have been with her mother, but he said that when her brother was shot and killed by mistake, um, she had to get out of there. So she moved to Moab. He said, well, come to Moab. And she moved there. And she actually told him that Moab saved her life because she was feeling very much like ending her own life. And it saved her life. And that's, um, I think, where she also met. That's where she met Crystal. She was on a hike with her dad, apparently. And they crossed paths and met and chatted a bit and exchanged numbers and things like that. And the rest is history. <laughs> so Leo, I recently found out that the range of Grizz merch is huge. <laughs> and there's a Let It Be hoodie in my favorite color. That is so awesome. Say, so, well, thank you for thanking us. Well, yeah, thank you. You guys are amazing. Dar A, welcome. New member. Enjoy the cycle video. Bruce Wayne says, $20 super sticker. Thank you. So, okay. In January of 2016, Kylan moved to Utah, and in 2018, she started working at the Moonflower Co-op as a cashier. In March of 2019, Kylan met Crystal Michelle Turner when she was out on a hike with her dad. They started dating in 2019, and in November of 2019, they sold everything and bought a, uh, a, bought a Ford Ecoline van that they converted into a mobile home or camper. In April of 2021, they got married in a treehouse in Arkansas. What am I missing? Thank you. That's so sweet. Thank you for always carving it up for us. You are wonderful and very smart. You're also so pretty. Thank you so much. I love the backgrounds you use. It is obvious your artistic talents are at play. Thank you so much. Do love to be creative. <laughs> what's up? What's up? 
Hello. I love seeing all the familiar faces. Suzanne says, because you are awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bones of Brian Laundry have been found again at Carlton Reserve. NPPD are back at the Mayaki Environmental Creek Park. Really? You know what I wonder? I said this already. This was based on uh, Cop Facts. If you haven't subscribed to Cop Facts yet, go check that channel out. Cop Facts, as in F A X X. Okay. <laughs> I realize it does sound like F A C T S. But um, he is a retired undercover homicide detective. And he was saying, well, if people are saying that he ended his own life, then where's the gun? Why aren't they searching for the gun? So I want to ask you now. Um, I don't know how to say your name there, but. Have more bones been found or are they now searching for the gun? Hmm? That's my question. Goodness, I'm just, this is going so fast. And mods, please let me know if I need to slow it down at all, if I need to slow it more. You became a member, got kicked out? Why? Why? Ah, oh, teddy bear, that's awesome. Bruce Wayne, damn, thank you so much. <laughs> $50 super sticker, my goodness, you are showing massive support tonight my goodness thank you so much oh map time shirt i am gonna do map time you know it i think um if i could just let my mods know i think this might go just over an hour i hope that's okay because i can see at the pace i'm going now <laughs> did you get the coffee i sent you the other day i really hope so um i will have a look and i do every week or so i try to respond to all the messages on buy me a coffee so i'll go have a look thank you so so much i really appreciate all the the coffees the power smoothies all those things it really um you know it's a very wonderful thing they're saying thank you so much i explain more about that again in the members videos if you want to see Yes, we covered this one. That park is an old Indian burial ground per Wikipedia, so it could be anyone's bones. Exactly. Yeah, you caught me live. If a croc got him, it would eat the gun too. <laughs> right? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. So I have so much to show you today. Okay. So I'm, and I'm saying, okay, a lot. I'll stop it. It's annoying me too. Don't worry. Thank you, Gizla, for... For the work you for, for the work you do, I appreciate I appreciate your hard work. Thank you so so much. You're so sweet. You guys are so sweet. My goodness. I hope you'll be on Sunday for the fundraiser that we're doing for the Gabby Petito Foundation. Yes, Lieutenant Peter Pranza will be in the house on the same day. Hmm? <laughs> Maybe a bit of Phil Grimaldi. <laughs> Maybe Bill Cannon. We'll see. We'll see. You can join. <laughs> so. They got married in a treehouse in Arkansas. Isn't that so sweet? Kylan and Crystal went camping in the South Mesa area of the LaSalle Loop Road in, wait, LaSalle Loop Road, just away from Moab. What is this area called? In the mountains, LaSalle Mountains, right? On August 13th, they were last seen at Woody's Tavern in Moab on the evening of August 13th. They left around 9 or 9.30, but then they went to their friend's house, which was a couple. Okay, and, and they were there until just after midnight and then allegedly head, headed back to camp, which to me means they'd already set up camp. Camp was set up. That's why they were able to tell their friends there was a creepy man there. Well, there was a creeper there freaking us out, camping way too close to us. So they actually moved their campsite according to what the family is saying, as in Kyle and Crystal's family. They say they were told that like, whoa, this creeper, I don't know, he's so close to us because you're supposed to like have some boundaries and distance. And this camper was like right on top of them and they felt really freaked out by it. So they moved slightly, but the, the area that I showed you on map time, that's where they were found. Just make sure I'm not missing something. Wasn't the twine wrapped around the gun found in the reserve the same as by this couple? Yes, that's the interesting thing. The thing is, you know, you got to think true crime. So, I mean, twine is twine. It's often red and white like that, but it is interesting. It is a very interesting coincidence, nevertheless. Yeah, I agree with you that he probably didn't get on the rope. Oh, whoa, someone could have found and taken the gun. Imagine that. That is true. There's a lot of people uh, living in that area. The phone and car key has been identified. Brian Laundry comes to mind to me. Okay, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Did you squash your coffee? <laughs> Squashing the coffee. That sounds so cool. <laughs> I don't know what it means. But yes, I carved it right up. 
Ah, uh, man, thank you so much. Your speech about nicknames. I went on quite a little rant. Uh, if you missed it, <laughs> it was my video before about Brian deleting his Instagram. And at the end of that video, there's quite the rant. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, shame. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Thank you. So they mentioned to this couple, I just wish we could see an interview from the couple. So couple, if you're watching and you want to be on the Grizzly Books True Crime show, if Cindy Sue Hunter is watching this, if Sean Paul Schultz is watching this, if Jason Jensen, the PI, who I've texted and emailed multiple times, is watching this, you're invited to be on the show. I would love to have you on the show. Hear your thoughts. Keep shining light on this case because it's still unsolved at this point. And now no one in Moab really wants to talk. Ah, French press. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Hello to Melanie. So... They told the friends at the bar at Woody's Tavern that there was a creepy man that had been camping way too close to them and that if they were murdered, it would be because of him. Isn't that so scary? So what can we learn from that? I always try to learn from true crime, true crime cases. I'm sure you guys do too, because what a lot of us have in common is anxiety and possibly depression. Just a loose generalization, but like anxiety of like, oh my word, how did that happen? And what can we learn from this? So we deep dive it and everything, but we also try to learn lessons. Am I right? So if you feel really uncomfortable and like this is so creepy, even from our own experience with trauma, you know what the worst is when you've got the gut instinct and you ignore it? Thank you so much, Jeff Hankins. What's up, Jeff? Thank you for that super sticker. <laughs> Squashing and carving. <laughs> Squashing and carving. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's see this. Not his bones. Why hasn't anyone heard from Waters? He was a fugitive living out there. He would have heard gunshots. Right? Are we live? We are live. We are live. So what can we learn from this? If you've got gut, a gut instinct that says, oh, my word. No, 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 no. Just rather do something radical and drastic and get your get yourself out of that situation instead of justifying that it's okay and it's fine and we'll be fine and all that because that's what I've done before and I got in a lot of trouble by doing that, by being like, oh my word, this is so scary. And then I'm like, talk myself out of the gut instinct. Follow your gut instinct. Trust your gut instinct. It's there for a reason. Trust your intuition. Cindy Sue is very nice. We did an interview on another channel, I am a mod with. Annie, I would love to have Cindy Sue on the channel. I've been inviting and inviting and trying to contact, and I just am not managing at the moment. But hopefully soon I will be. Pamela, I'm sorry that you had problems. If you are ordering from your iPhone or an Apple device, sometimes they give you problems. So what you got to do is go on Chrome. Don't use Safari because Apple doesn't like the checkout cart of Teespring for some reason, just like it doesn't like the membership on YouTube. <laughs> anxiety and depression check check lol <laughs> maybe moab has lots of secrets the town remains quiet yeah the intuition was on point that day huh scott fritz wall creations thank you so much so a post to the tavern's facebook post says these two women were very much in love with each other and their focus and attention was always on each other adding that despite reports uh, the woman had been followed out, no one followed them out the door. Kylan and Crystal were both supposed to work on Sunday, August 15th, but they did not show up for work, which was so unlike them, right? They had great work ethics. Everyone only had compliments to say about them. They always showed up. And so then they were like, this is weird. They both didn't show up. So they're like, hmm. And then they waited and waited. And let's just see on these notes here. Okay, sorry, I'm just looking at multiple notes at one time. So they didn't apply that they didn't get to work on August 15th. People were worried. I think they were reported missing on August 16th. That's what I was trying to look at on my notes here. Um so, but if if they were both both supposed to work on Sunday, August 15th, and didn't show up, it means that we can narrow down the window, right? Of when what happened. So sometime after midnight on August 13th and the morning of August 15th, Kylan and Crystal were murdered. 
Kylan's last shift at Moonflower was on August 12th between 7.30 a.m. and 12 p.m. 12 p.m.? No, I think it was 2 or 3 p.m. 7.30 and 12? That's what I wrote down here. Hmm. On the 16th of August, Kylan and Crystal were officially reported missing. This is what the article says from 7.30 to 12, which is interesting because from, what, 9 to 3, Brian and Gabby were in a coffee shop. I don't know if it was Moab or just across the road, actually, as in Moonflower or just across the road. I'm not too sure about that one. That's not actually confirmed. Which coffee shop were they at? Um, to everyone sending me super chats and stickers, thank you so, so much. I try not to miss them, but I really appreciate it. If I miss one, just know I really, really appreciate it. Damn, Jeff, thank you so much. That's so sweet. Okay. So there could have been a crossover, especially if they were at Moonflower. The, the private investigator did say there's still a small possibility that Brian Laundry was involved. What do you think? I should actually run a poll on that, right? What do you think? Let me just focus. But what do you think? You can just tell me what you think. We forget to listen to ourselves. Isn't that the worst feeling in the world? Like, oh my word, and I've done it quite a few times. Now I really, I act on my gut instinct. If I got a gut instinct, I'm like, oh no, no, no. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. <laughs> what, what, what? And then I listen to it and run. I'm quite drastic these days. The other day I was standing outside a grocery store, side note, this man was just standing there and he was like, hello. And just like, really, I don't know. He just creeped me out for a second. But I immediately, normally I'd be like stuck in this empath mode of like, I don't know what to do, but I'm just like, mm -mm. I just went like, mm -mm, and I just walked away. <laughs> that was a first, but rather safe than sorry. Didn't mean to be rude, but I'd rather be safe. My husband said to say hello. He has never got interested in a true crime, anything until he saw me watching your channel. Damn. Thank you so much. Appalachian living. What's up? I think they were killed during their move on Saturday. That would explain the Harley and the van at McDonald's. That is odd. That is an odd fact, right? So Cindy Sue Hunter, who knew the woman, right? She was friends with Kylan, went to search for them herself. The police went to search, but they didn't find anything, which is odd too. So Cindy Sue Hunter went out herself to search for them. And she said she put in fuel and she was just going to drive until she either ran out of fuel which doesn't sound safe, but she was just going to drive and she was determined to find them. So she found them at their campsite. Um, unfortunately, what she saw is terrible. Kylan was in a creek because it's only two foot wide. I thought it was three foot wide, but uh, Kylan's dad has said that it's two foot wide. It's a really tiny creek, just a little bit of water. Like, oh my goodness, we've done it on map time before. And Cindy Sue said her limbs were in, in a weird position. So trigger warning, this is true crime. Please know if you're triggered easily, this might not be the episode for you. So I'm going to say some details now, right? So she said that her, her arms, her, her arms were just positioned weirdly and that both women were naked from the waist down and one of them had their top or bra pulled up. So it seems to me like a sexual crime, right? Thank you, Lee Ann Edwards. I'm aware. Thank you, Rochelle. You say, I believe Brian killed Kylan and Crystal. I got to do a poll. I know I got to do one. I'm just going to just work through this timeline and then I'm going to do it. All right. It rained a lot for five days. It rained and hailed and stormed and everything. So a lot of evidence could have been destroyed then. Yeah, your gut instinct is always correct. Let's see. So do you know about this case? 75% said, yes, I do. 8% said, not much. And 17% said, just a little bit. Okay. I'm calling the poll. Who do you think did this? I don't want to say words like murder right now on you, okay? But you know what I mean by who do you think did this?
Here we go. Poll is up for you. Okay, I'm gonna close this for a second. I so badly want to see this case solved. Any clue who did? I don't have any clue who did this. In my mind, I think it's two people, at least two people, because it's two women who love each other to death. They love each other so much. They've just gotten married four months ago, right? Before this happened, four months before they got married, ready to live their lives together. They were avid campers, well experienced campers. They had their little bunny with them, the tent was set up, the car was there. So to for one person to take them on, that's that's very interesting. How? Uh, Cindy Sue Hunter also said she believes that they were dragged out of their tent. So to me, that sounds like it's two people. <laughs> oh, fun. You make polls that fast. So, Leo, you can say your opinion uh, here. Say it. From the grocery store she worked. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So I'm sorry if I'm going at, at granny speed today. No shade to grannies. I feel like a granny myself sometimes. I'm like, <laughs> granny goose. My nickname is Goose. My husband calls me Goose. So they little fact, huh? Little fact here from the personal life. Okay, so <laughs> moving right along. So Kylan was in a creek and Crystal was found nearby and both women are partially dressed and had multiple gunshot wounds. I mean, like back, side, front, everything. Like, whoa. Sean Paul Schulter set up a clue booth in Swanee Park and received many tip-offs, majority of which turned out to be really helpful in the, in the investigation. So he said more than 35 tips, five of them were total bogus, but 30, 30, 30 of them then were pretty good. The, but the set of keys wasn't one of them. So they want to shut this down, okay? The set of keys, they're like, no, 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 just stop with the set of keys, okay? <laughs> so we were all like, oh my word, it's Brian's keys, and well, I remember that, remember? So let's go here. The keys was not one of them. This has been debunked by the private investigator and the family of Kylan and Crystal. So now if I go here, I've got, <laughs> I've got notes everywhere on my phone, on my notebook, on my computer. It's everywhere. I've been deep diving, people. So um, Sean Paul Schulter said they were closer to the road and pushed in the mud a bit. These are the keys, right? They looked a little weathered, like they might have been sitting there a month uh, now, which is about how long those keys would have been sitting there. They didn't look like they'd been sitting there for three years and didn't look like they'd been sitting there one day. So there's that. And then... I've got one more thing for you here, which says the keys are a closed lead that do not need further public assistance. In the last 24 hours, I responded to 20 plus messages about the keys. Let me try to be perfectly clear and I beg of the members here to help respect this lead. I myself want to focus elsewhere, not continually respond about this. The keys were turned into the clue booth. They were then, Sean Paul then turned them over to the sheriff. We posted pictures to help find the gym. A member here found the match. The gym owner provided uh, the member information to Sean Paul and the sheriff. We do not need any more information or research on the keys. Out of respect of the gym, we agree to delete all pictures and information regarding the keys. The idea is to get information to solve the case. Once the lead had all the information needed and passed to, to the investigation team, we do not need any further discussion on that item. All key discussions are removed and should be not be posted anywhere else. So the keys thing is like, all right, that's done. I got an itch on my eye. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so on August 27th, the no, no, on August 22nd, I see 22 and I say 27. Why, why, why? Okay, on August 22nd, the Moab community held a candlelight vigil for Kylan and Crystal. Now, one of the most recent updates is that a cell phone was found at the campsite. It was a Samsung phone. We'll look at a clip from the private investigator in a moment. The sheriff's office is now asking anyone who was in the South Mesa area of the LaSalle Mountains between the dates of August 13th, 14th, and 15th to contact investigators with what they may have heard. So 13, 14, 15th. 
According to the Grand County Sheriff's Office, investigators have called on numerous labs and technicians to assist in the forensic analysis of items of interest in the case. Unfortunately, the analysis could take several months or more to complete. If you have any information about the double homicide of Schulte and Turner, you can contact the Grand County Sheriff's Office, 435-259-8115. Two $10,000 rewards are being offered for information aiding the investigation. So now there's $20,000 available for a reward if there's any information that leads to finding out who on earth did this. On Thursday, the Grand County Sheriff's Office announced a second $10,000 reward. That was the next news, right? So two of them. For information leading to the arrest and conviction of the person or persons involved. So they do say the person or persons involved with the deaths of Turner and Schulter. Right? If anybody saw anything there, a vehicle, a description of a person, a person with a dog, a weirdo with a gun, whatever it is, please tell the authorities. We got water break. <laughs> I hope I'm not missing too much. Um, just focusing over here. Let's just scroll up for a second and then I'll have a look at your poll results as well. Yeah, what was that about the phone they found? So it was a Samsung phone. We're going to go now to the investigator's interview. Okay, so I'm going to close my little Word document here and I'm going to Open this one and let's go <laughs> to a million tabs that I've opened and find the right one. <laughs> okay. all over the country, partly because of its strange ties to the Gabby Petito case. Two months ago, the bodies of a newlywed couple were found shot to death at a campsite in Utah. Kylan Schulte and Crystal Turner were last seen at a bar in Moab and days later were discovered dead. Tonight, a newly released affidavit for a search warrant details what investigators found on that campsite, including cell phone data in the area. According to investigators, a cell phone was found at the scene and is considered evidence, but it's unclear who that phone belongs to. What? 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 A cell phone. It's so interesting, this, because I think that Brian had an iPhone, but I'm not 100% sure. I know Gabby had one. But you know what's weird is when he got home, he immediately went with his mommy to buy a new phone. So that's weird. That's that's a strange coincidence. There's a lot of weird coincidences, but let's carry on. Let's carry on. And that could change things and open up this investigation. Private investigator Jason Jensen was so fascinated by this case that he wanted to get involved. He is helping the family and, and took on this case pro bono and with us tonight. Uh, Jason Pro bono, um, Lisa, is it Lisa? Loretta, a question I keep asking whereabouts of John Freeman cult at the time. He was camping at a dispersed camp, that we know. However, I don't know exactly where he was at the time, but the authorities have said he's not at all involved, which is interesting. I think what law enforcement and maybe the investigator are trying to say as well is, if we keep on saying it's definitely Brian or this uh, John Freeman cult dude, well, then it almost eliminates the possibility of who it actually could be. You know, if we just keep on insisting this is what it is, this is what it is, we have to keep an open mind. Even if it's a pie chart and each one gets a third, you know, Brian, okay, then there's John Freeman cult, even though those have been supposedly cleared, interesting, but what if it's two other people? And I'm still saying two, in my gut, it feels like two, but you let me know. I also think they would have crossed paths and spoken to them. He was around the area. He really was. Jason, I appreciate you coming back on. I want to start with that cell phone. Do you have any idea who it could belong to? Thank you, Marnie. No, actually, I don't. Remember, uh, when it's a police investigation and they're going through processing a crime scene, any evidence that they recover, they take into position and take it to the crime lab and disseminate to whatever resources they're going to use to determine what the evidentiary value is. So the self. 
I just got to pause it every now and then. That's for fair use. You can't just play any video you want on YouTube. You got to make comments on it and actually, you know, I just can't just play the whole thing. So I do have to stop it every now and then. I'm sorry about that, but it's how it works. They should release more information and evidence to the public as the Grizzlies could solve this crime. <laughs> they should release more information. We want information. They may, they might have known the killer or killers. I agree. Kong would likely go to the Rocky Mountain uh, forensics lab for the FBI for processing to determine, you know, uh, extract uh, from that phone who they were in communication with uh, in, to identify who the carrier is and things like that so they can reveal potentially whose phone that was. So mm -hmm. if it was. I can't believe there's a phone there. I really hope they can find whose phone it was. And I know, as they say, they're doing like checking the cell phone towers and everything. Jason Jensen has 17 suspects, right? Now we've got to narrow that down. Was it one of the victims? Uh, by process of elimination, we would hope that that phone would be, you know, the suspect that was responsible for their deaths. Yeah, and answer a lot of big questions. Jason, um, I know you've read the affidavit. What stands out to you about what we've learned? Uh, from the affidavit or overall? Both. Yeah, overall, I mean, I, what I sense is that law enforcement is doing a bang good job on trying to get to the bottom of this because, uh, you know, they're just turning over every stone possible to, to go through and identify cell phone towers pretty creative. And you have to be for a, a, a wilderness murder like this because you don't have the advantage of going next door and getting ring doorbell cameras or anything like that to identify a suspect or a vehicle belonging to that suspect. I can't believe they found, a, they found a phone at the campsite. The FBI has subpoenaed power for phone data if required. Yes, and I really hope they find, they might have already found it, you know. Carve it up, everyone. You say, I really hope it's Brian Laundrie's phone. I just hope they find the killer, like whoever that may be and that they're held accountable type of gun and was there more than one i wish they would release some ballistics what type of bullets what type of gun exactly was there more than one crazy coincidence right suspect so they're being real creative and using whatever resources and whatever angle they can figure out. You know, Jason, the last time you and I spoke, you told me that you couldn't rule out a connection to Brian Laundrie with the deaths of Crystal and Kylan. Do you still feel that way? He's still, unfortunately, on that list, even if my personal opinion is it's unlikely. And the reason why I have that opinion is you know, on the 14th, which is the date in question that I believe that these two were murdered, I can't imagine that Gabby Petito would be, you know, present during a double murder like this. Uh, and so I just don't see it having an opportunity. Now, if they were separated and Brian did it alone, yes, but I just can't imagine someone sweet like Gabby Petito being involved in a double murder. Good point, good point. Yeah, it will make sense. That will actually be quite the aha moment if it actually is him, right? Like, oh, my word. I think we'd say, we knew it, but I don't know. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to end that one there. So let me just remove this for a second. Let's crack this cake. Okay, it's not always nice, but the truth will set you free. Okay, I just want to make sure that I read all these notes. So we've covered um, the keys. Yes, and on the Friday and Saturday, there was a wedding party at Whispering Oaks Lodge. So we know about that. And since the 4th of September, uh, Kylan's dad has been looking for clues, like on his own, every single day, clue booth. Wow. So I mustn't forget the, the later is. Just hold on. Okay. So, yeah, I was going to say that, but then I'm like, hmm. Gabby did read the same books as Brian, and they would read them together out loud to each other. Yes, they did. It's been said that the bullets found at the site are similar to the gun that Gabby was holding on Instagram photo, according to a retired marshal. <gasps> That's scary. Like a 9 millimeter. Is that what we're talking about? Okay. So I'm going to close this one now because I've got millions of things to show you. <laughs> Here we go.
Okay, so in this one, I think I'm just going to skip to show you the text, right? Because that's what's important. You can see, I'll, I'll play it quickly. The campsite near the LaSalle Loop Road, there was a blue Kia Sorrento, a single camp tent, a makeshift rabbit shelter, Sorry. and normal doing like adverts okay so there was a search warrant issued um eventually to search their campsite to search their cars to search the storage unit so now we're going to look at what they found there just as part of the clues to maybe into the campsite and said maybe so the search warrant found that at the campsite near the LaSalle loop road there was their blue kia sorrento and a single camp tent so you're asking why do they camp in the car and not with a van i don't know but they left the car in the harley parked outside mcdonald's and they went to camp with their kia sorrento and a single camp tent a makeshift rabbit shelter and normal amenities for a long-term for long-term camping and then of course the bodies of crystal turner and kylan schulter in a nearby creek One of the females, sorry, I hope this is not triggering for anyone, had on a bra that was raised to expose her breasts. The second female was dressed in only a tank top and multiple gunshot, wound, gunshot wounds on both bodies located on the backs, sides, and or chests of the victims. Thank you so much. So we've got that. And now I want to just go forward here to it's 836. Yeah. Okay. Let me just pause it. Investigators were informed that Kylan had mentioned to her friends that if something happened to them, that they were murdered. Kylan had continued by saying there was a creepy man around the camp and that they'd been that they had been intimidated by him. Kylan and Crystal were reported to be last seen at Woody's Tavern. Security footage shows them leaving the bar on August 13th, 2021. Search warrant details. Investigators were informed that Kylan had mentioned... Oh, sorry. I just read that. Hold on. I'm like, ooh, a new page. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Blooper. Here we go. Okay. Been left in the parking lot of the McDonald's located at the intersection of Cane Creek Boulevard. Now, this is the van. Talk about living the van life. This is that van. The van was registered to both of the victims. There was one black journal with newspaper clippings. Miscellaneous mail, pay stubs, a Bible, miscellaneous notes with handwritten information. Now, some other information coming forward now. We've got an electronic scale with residue, which tested positive for marijuana, a glass pipe with a green leafy residue, small plastic container with green leafy residue, 10 blue pills identified as uh, clonazepam, 13 white pills identified as ibuprofen, nine capsules identified as amoxicillin, and one and a half pink pills identified as prednisone. Uh okay, so you can see that this is what they found at the campsite and in the car, right? An electronic scale with the residue, which tested positive for marijuana, a glass pipe with green leafy residue, so like a bong, I guess, a small plastic container with green leafy residue, 10 blue pills identified as clonazepam, 13 white pills identified as ibuprofen, painkiller, nine capsules identified as amoxicillin, and one and a half pink pills identified as prednisone. Um, but I wanted to show you something else that came out of the, the, the search warrant, which was a storage unit, which was shared by... Okay, so they had a storage unit, and they were able to have the search warrant also just detailed. This is just for facts and clues. This is not to throw shade at Kylan and Crystal. They hardly have, it's not, it's not like they have like a huge amount, like a huge drug bust or something. They just got a few things, which, you know, it was in the car and it was in the storage unit. One of them was named Kyle. Okay. You say this is for chest infections. Thank you, Jakey. Yeah, anti-anxiety. That's what I was thinking. These are a lot of anti-anxiety things. All prescriptions, exactly. So let's just have a look at what was in the storage both unit. Both victims and the father of one of the victims, okay? So they're sharing this storage unit. 
And in there, five marijuana paraphernalia items, one methamphetamine paraphernalia item, four cocaine paraphernalia items, two bags of white substance consistent with cocaine, two tablets, six smartphones. So there were a lot of phones there. So maybe, hopefully not, but maybe the phone that was also just left there could have been one of their many phones. <laughs> you say, I have all of those at home, bar one. Anti-anxiety. Okay. No, it doesn't matter. It's just part of the case facts. Just part of the case facts. All right, Kenneth Gray, I'll start with you. Um, so looking at the drug aspect of this, and, and obviously, um, you know, it could be personal use. I don't know. But you've got a scale. What, what more do you want to know? Uh, what else would you look into uh, based upon things that were found here, uh, both in that van and in the storage unit? I would talk to friends, relatives to see whether or not uh, either one of these ladies were uh, engaged in any type of sales of narcotics, any type of sales of marijuana. Uh, the... You say six smartphones, do you think? But uh, some of you say, what? We've got like 12, like, you know, old phones lying around. Of course, when you upgrade your phone, you've got old phones lying around. No one's implicating anyone here. The point is to provide clues, you know? What if they had a connection? I don't know. Those phones and the numbers on the phone and all that could help to keep on finding suspects. A jealous ex-boyfriend, right? Because Kylan had a boyfriend before. She was pregnant when she was 16 and she lost her baby. I couldn't find how, but the baby's name was Blake. It was a daughter, Blake. So, yes, um, it could be like a jealous ex-boyfriend. I mean, we just don't know at this point, you know? Scale is something of interest there. Uh, the scale tends to imply that one or both were involved with trying to sell drugs on the side. And, you know, they uh, one was working in, at that McDonald's uh, where the van was found. Uh, I'd like to know whether or not the van was still working. Maybe the reason why it was still parked at the McDonald's was maybe it wasn't wasn't functional at the time. Jason Jensen, there's a there's a lot of information revealed in in all these warrants. Okay, so just to see the final bit of this, it's a few more seconds. And obviously, investigators are following every lead they can. Where do you think the 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 lead comes from that that leads to a suspect here? Is it going to be from, from a, something forensically, something that was left, something that was found, or do you think it's going to come from a person who, who knows well, I something? Think the, I think the strongest likelihood of lead, leading to a suspect would be from the DNA testing. Uh, Ken hit the nail when he said about the MVAC. Uh, my friend, and you know, I'm from Utah, I'm very familiar with Moab, uh, one of the things that uh, my friend uh, Francine Bartle uh, has developed using the MVAC is the Bartle method, which she's used to actually retrieve DNA off of the spent uh, shell casings at a, a gang shooting. So, Okay, so we've got that, so some case facts. So I'm going to close that. I want to show you um, Kylan's... Instagram account that she had quite a while ago. Just hold on one second. I'm just want to scroll all the way down. I mean, it was from, wait, 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 2013. Just to show you, just out of interest sake, okay? So this this was um, Kylan's Instagram account when from 2013, so from when she was much younger, this was my beautiful baby, Blake Siniad. Also, Colt Memory said, Bill made a great point. If this was a drug person, they would have been cleaned out. True. It sounds, it feels to me like this was a very rushed, sexual driven, sexually driven murder. What do you guys think? Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know about those. That would be interesting. Okay, so yes, Kylan was pregnant before. She said, my beautiful Blake Siniad. She said, I love my shirt. Let me know if I'm going too fast. I think the sexual part might have been faked afterwards. I mean, it could be. It really could be. So this is Blake, mommy of an angel. Which I think she she lost her baby. Shame. She said, because I can. Thank you to the Grizzly subscriber who found this old account. I really appreciate it. Any information is appreciated. Just to see. I heard the restaurant deleted the video of Brian and Gabby. That's unfortunate. I heard that too. And it's a whole new story now. Okay. Senior year. Wow, she says, young, old-time Spongebob. Shame. She was so young there. Investigators should be able to tell the difference between a real SA and a staged one. I agree. I love these plants. My little guy. She says, Venus flytrap. <laughs> Me and the babe. Lol. She says, hashtag, I love him forever. Ever kiss his silly faces. See? She had a boyfriend before. What if, what if it's a jealous ex-boyfriend? Who's this dude? <laughs> Anyone tagged? Hmm. Got to do another deep dive before another account is deleted, huh? 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 Me and my bun. Shame. My boy. Back to the future. Hmm. Mr. Jack. <laughs> this is anyone who knows me knows the same my real hair. Lol. Yeah, that's like when I wear those wigs, huh? <laughs> I should say that. For sale, $25. Anybody in Billings, Montana area? Pink Floyd. <laughs> Who this guy? She said future hubby. We're almost there. I don't know if it's someone from the wedding party. My Victor. Hashtag ice cream. <laughs> because Slayer, that's why. Shame. And that's all of it. So there we can see her old Instagram account, Montana Metalhead Welder, 16, guitar, one alone drums, and I want a career in the welding business. Okay. Do they have pizza delivery campgrounds? Ooh, to the campgrounds in the Tetons? Interesting. Do they? That's true as well. They said creepy man. They didn't say, well, we don't know if the creepy man, because they moved campsites and I don't know how far they moved campsites. You know, when they say there's a creeper, if we end up murdered as a creeper, but then apparently they moved the campsite. Now I want to know 
if they moved their campsite, where did they camp before? Because we know where they were found. So how far did they move? Was it just like a little shift or what? Yes, a stranger was looking and didn't seem like they knew him. Interesting. <laughs> just saying, if I had past criminal records, I, I would show it. <laughs> I don't have it. <laughs> Now, just hold on, bear with me. I hope you don't mind these like silent moments where I'm just like gathering myself, gathering my thoughts. Just hold on, I'm just finding something here. So the keys debunked, the cell phone found. There was this affidavit, so let's go there. I just want to see, I think it was here. Let's just take a piece of text off. This says press release. This was September 28th already. Uh, Kylan Schulter, Crystal Turner homicide. The Grand County Sheriff's Office has and continues to follow up with any information and tips received regarding this homicide investigation. The response has benefited this office in the investigation of the case. We are asking that anyone that would have been in the South Mesa area between the dates of August 13th, 14th, and 15th contact our office with anything they may have seen or heard. The Grand County Sheriff's Office has enlisted numerous labs and technicians to assist in the forensic analysis of items of interest in this case. That analysis may take several months or more to complete. The Grand County Sheriff's Office understands the public concern and speculation surrounding this case and will, when available, release any information that does not impede the investigatory process. The Grand County Sheriff's Office appreciates the support available within the community directed towards both law enforcement and the public. Of course, there was this, and then after that was the search warrant. Did they move or were they starting to move? Apparently, they moved. According to Kylan's dad, he alluded to them moving camp, like, oh, creepy guy, we're moving camp. But where? From where to where? I know where they were found. We did map time of that. We can do map time again. But where? You know? Now, I wanted to tell you about this one, which is, this, I've got a lot of pages open, but you'll see this one. Uh, there is a GoFundMe, and they did stop it for a while, but I believe it's going again. So the link is in the description box below if you want to help out with Sean Paul Schulte's expenses in this homicide investigation. So they said, update 9th of the 9th, we have reinstated receiving donations. As we learn more about this horrific crime, it's apparent the costs that Kylan's dad will incur are not going to stop anytime soon. The details of this heinous and horrific act have resulted in more time needed in Moab, more travel costs, more lost wages, and more support needed. Sean Paul Schulte has been the beneficiary of this fund and is currently the boots on the ground for Kylan and Crystal in the fight for justice. We thank you for your ongoing support, love, and prayers. And here they say donors of $50 or more can now request a rock painted by Kai Cry, Dad Sean Paul. This was one of Kylan's amazing skills, and he has quickly taken over this artistic talent. Please message us if you're donating $50 or more and would like a rock. That's so sweet. Bridget Calvert and Sean Paul Schulte. So they've raised $45,230 out of their $50,000 goal. So Grizzlies, you know what to do. Carve it right up. Click the donate button. <laughs> the link is in the description box. Um, I think I also shared it. There we go. Thank you so much, JC. Uh, JC is sharing it as well. So you guys can just click it. Thank you so much, mods. I'm just seeing here. I'm sure all the mods are sharing. And thank you very, very much. You finally caught a live. Just Larry, what's up? Melaboy used cocaine, didn't he? When people say he was calm, the close-up looked like he was stoned to me. I don't know. Apparently not, but I don't know. Get, Brian could have drugged Gabby and followed the girls. Could have. That's true. All right. So we've looked at that. Let's take this one off for a second. So the father of Moab murder victim Kylan Schulte asked visitors to check their dash cams. Moab, Utah, the father of Kylan Schulte believes that someone outside of the Moab community may have information about his daughter's murder. Kylan Schulte and her wife, uh, Crystal Turner, were found dead in a campsite on LaSalle Loop Road near Moab on August 18, 2021. Sean Paul Schulte spoke on KSL News Radio's blah, blah, blah program, this program, right? Sean Paul Schulte said that the local population in Moab likely doesn't have any more information. 
What I'm more concerned about are the people who are visiting back in August 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, who may have dash cam going around the LaSalle Mountain Loop Road, the little county road that the girls were parked just off. Nearly seven weeks after their murders, there's not much new information about the case. Some of the most recent information was included in search warrant affidavits that were filed in the 7th District Court. Those affidavits revealed that Schulte and Turner had called friends to say that there was a weirdo in the camp area and that they were changing their campsite. See? And they said he was creepy and that they were intimidated by him. A friend found one of the women's bodies on August 18th. Whew, and Schulte said it's time for the media to get involved. The best thing to do right now is really pump up the press and try to get it around the world. So that's what we're trying to do, right? Because people who were in Moab on August 11th, 12th, and 13th, they've left. What we're looking for is the kind of co coverage that Gabby Petito got, the upper level news coverage to spread the word. Someone was able to identify Gabby's van and they were able to find her body. As Kylan's dad, I want the same thing Gabby's father mentioned, which is equal coverage. Petito's, as we know, where she was discovered, we've done map time on that as well. I'm going to look at your messages in a moment. Okay, Melon Boy and his cop buddy. Woo -wee. Suzanne, <laughs> maybe. <gasps> That's so scary. What a scary thought. That is a scary thought. Melon Boy and his cop buddy. Oh my word. Police always say no reason to be afraid. <laughs> what? Wait, I missed that. Police always say no reason to be afraid. They just want people to be calm, whether or not they actually know there's an ongoing threat or not. Well, yeah, they got to say that. Panic doesn't help anyone, right? But stay safe. Okay, let's change the banner for a second here. I'll put my new banner on grizzly-books.com instead of carve it up the whole time. But carve out the like button. So the private investigator believes the satellite images could be critical in solving Moab's nearly west double homicide, right? So we talked about that earlier. Where he's really hoping that there will be satellite images just to even identify a car color. Thank you, Just There. You said keep up the amazing work. Thank you so much. And Foggy Morn, thank you to you as well. So did the creepy man follow them to the new campsite? Oh, my word, that is the question. I want to know as well. I just want to know. An angry ex is a definite possibility if he was a DV type. Depends how long ago. That's what I was thinking. But good point. Good point made by Rochelle Pranzo of like, but yet they said it's a creepy man. It's not like my ex is lurking around or like they said a creepy man. However, what if they were at one campsite and they said, ooh, this creepy man, and then they moved to another campsite and whoever murdered them isn't related to the creepy man. It doesn't mean that the creepy man murdered them. There was a creepy man, but there's a lot of creepy men in the world, unfortunately. So if you're like, ooh, that guy's creepy and you move campsite, I wish I knew how far that is. Then... You move campsite, and now just ironically, there's a murderer or two. You know what I mean? Was Kylan wearing her necklace with a cross when she was found? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he got mad that they moved. Yeah, creepy men in the wilderness are very common, right? Well, facts. Okay. <laughs> I'm just looking at all these things I've opened to show you. Now I want to show you. I want to. I don't know if anyone's covered. Where are they now? Like, as in, where are their remains? Have they been buried? What's going on? Do you know? Because I don't know at first, and I'm like always interested in that. So let me just see what your poll results are. Who do you think did this? 44% said Brian. 6% said a hunter. Um. 6% also said a police officer and 44% two people still running on the loose. But if there's the theory of melon boy and cop buddy, that's interesting because that's a whole nother option. Thank you for voting. I saw there were 577 votes. Thank you for voting on that poll. Okay. So now <laughs> what do you want to do first? Should we do the, where are they buried? Um, you know, what happened to them? I find this really sad how, I'll tell you now. Got to sip my water and not right into the mic, right? 
What makes a man appear creepy? That is such a good question. Like, what makes a man? It's just a vibe. I don't know. I could make a whole list. I could probably write a book. <laughs> the title of my next book, What Makes a Man Creepy? <laughs> right? It's not just a man, men or women. People can be creepy. They were at their campsite where the creepy man was ascending you the area that they were moving from. True, true, true. Yeah, they went far. I don't think the move was too far. It was just like, how far? I just want to know. Is it like, Pete, is it like, how, how far are we talking that they moved campsite? To me, it feels like when I read things, it was just from one little, like they were too, the guy was too close and they just moved over, you know, like scooch on over, like, cool. You just like, whoa, dude, just keep your distance. Something like that. Cindy also said on her way driving in, she saw a man in a blue car driving out who looked really creepy. Like he really looked strange to her. So that's interesting as well. <laughs> you say, ask again. Listen to this while getting dressed for my beach bonfire Halloween party. Hey, all. Creepy means how they act. Yeah, creepy. Wow. <laughs> It's actually so difficult to explain that now. We need a whole show for that. So what I want to show you now is this. If we go to, this is a great um, website if you want to find out where people ended up, where they were buried, things like that. So can you see it properly or not? So Kylan Carol Schulte, right? Schulte or Schulte. I've heard them say Schulte. South Africa would say Schulte, but Schulte. Birth, 5th of September, 1996. Vale, Eagle County, Colorado, USA, and she died, they say here, 18th of August, 2021, age 24, Grand County, Utah, USA. I hope you can see it. If not, please let me know, then I can show it a different way. Like that? I don't think that's any better, really. Anyway. So, sibling to Macion Daniel Schulte, whose burial site is the same cemetery as Kylan. So, she was buried at the same place that they say, actually, where her brother was buried, who died in 2015, and they say her daughter. So, her daughter was buried there. I don't know how she lost it or miscarried, but she was buried there. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, vibe. So police in Utah have launched a homicide investigation in the deaths of a married female couple shot to death on Wednesday at a campsite in Grand County. So we know about the victims, right? The woman, well, I've seen it at a tavern. They're just going over it again. Normally they would say all the, I don't know. Can you guys see this? I hope so. Otherwise I might as well just read it to you. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the text very well. It looks tiny. So they say several friends are posting fond remembrances of the couple on social media. Kylan Schulter would always comment about how beautiful the flowers were in front of the restaurant. One wrote on Facebook, she asked a few weeks ago to pick a few for her wife. They were truly in love and spread so much joy around them. I'm so sorry for, that this happened to them. Both were absolutely amazing souls. Schulte's family set up the GoFundMe, which I just showed you, right? And if you look at her spouse, when I click on that, um, that's obviously Crystal Michelle Turner. Crystal Turner Beck, 38, passed away on August 18, 2021. She was born on December 30th, 1982 in Hot Springs, Arkansas, to Obi and Beverly Turner. Crystal was outgoing and always brought joy and laughter to others. She enjoyed the great outdoors, spending time on the lake, fishing and hiking and camping. She is predeceased by her father, Obi C. Turner, her brother, Greg Monty, her other brother, Randy Monty, and brother, Christopher Turner. So then they say predeceased. It means that's who she left behind, right? She died before them. Loving survivors include her mother, Beverly Turner, her son, Isaac Beck, daughters, Olivia Beck and Savannah Beck, brother, Cody Turner, sisters-in-law, Brenda Monty and Renee Monty, nieces, nephews, and dear family friends, Kim Hogan and Jessica Watson. Okay. Now the thing is, why do I find it sad is because Crystal was cremated and she has been buried back home in Arkansas and Kylan has been buried. Um, let me find this one quickly here. She is at the doll funeral chapel. 
So they're separated. I just found that really sad. No, I know they were found. They always list their death date as the 18th. When they when bodies are found, that's when they are listed officially, like on their death certificate, as the day they died. That's what I initially thought. They all died before. So that's that's a lot of people that died right before, right? That's weird. It's like her father, her brother, her other brother, like, oh my word. So one more time, predeceased by her father. Brother, Greg, brother, Randy, and brother. So three brothers and a father died before her. Whoa. Yeah, you find it very sad also. I find it so sad that they were found that way and that now they're separated. I understand that the families want them to be buried where they're from. But it's so sad, right? Many siblings died before. It's a bit odd, hey? Three brothers and her dad died before. Okay. It happens, but it's a bit strange. It's a bit strange. Yeah, horrible. They couldn't be buried together. So Kylan is buried with her brother and her baby. And Crystal is buried back in Arkansas, hopefully with her father and three brothers. Goodness. Okay. So, I can show you some photos. Shame, they look so cute on their wedding. And it only happened, their wedding was only four months before this happened. <laughs> pre seed to come before in time. Okay, thank you. What were the first names of the two 911 calls made on August 12th? Ah, oh, we need the first names. I don't know. Okay. So we've seen that one. Yeah, they were married on April 20th, 2021. They say here on find a grave. It's findagrave.com. If you use that website to type in, you know, lots of things, whatever you want to find, that's when I wrote those books, the true crime books, which is on grizzly-books.com. I use find a grave a lot because you can find out a lot about the, the victims, you know, who they were, who their family was, connections, like photos of them, things like that. Yes. Chris was two of the of the 911 calls. Yeah, is it Chris? And is the other one like Dave or something? But I can't remember. One was named Chris. Okay. Yeah, they do usually say survived by. Thank you, everyone, for clearing that one up. I would also like to know how the brothers died. Should I look? Wait. So, Crystal Turner. We can look. So let's go to this brother. So let's look at the first brother, Greg E. Monty, age 45. He died at age 45. He was preceded in death by his father. Okay. Hmm. Surviving son, Derek. They don't say how he died on here. That's interesting. Death on the 6th of December, 2014, age 45 in Hot Springs, Garland County, Arkansas. Right. And Randy, let's see. Randy died at age 50, passed away on February 10th, 2021. He loved to spend time with family and friends, especially his grandbabies. Randy enjoyed listening to music and working on cars. Okay. Again, here they don't say how he died. And then we've got Christopher Turner. Christopher Turner died on uh, 27th of April, 2015. And he was only 28. Thank you so much, Foggy Morn. Thank you so much for that super sticker. That is so awesome. So he was cremated as well. So everyone was cremated. All three brothers and 
crystal. And this one died when he was 28 in 2015. So if we just go one more time. So Gregory died in 2014. Randy died in 2021, now 10th of Feb. And Chris Turner died in 2015. 2014. So we've got one in 2014, one in 2015, and one in 2021. And then Crystal as well in 2021. That's so weird. Thank you so much. Just seeing if I missed anything. Is find a gray free. It's 100% free. You can register and sign in and things like that. And I think you can donate to it or something. But it's free. It's a very valuable resource for me, especially when I was doing the true crime writing. But that is very strange, you know? So many brothers dead, all like in their last, what, six years? It's a bit odd. Um, also, one second. <laughs> oh, yeah, this was the Reddit forum I was looking for. I was trying to deep dive. How did, how did Kylan lose her baby? But they say they don't know. They didn't know. They just said it's absolutely heartbreaking and that they were buried separately. Okay, how are we doing with time? Oops. <laughs> Guys, I'm so sorry. I'm so into it. Oh my word. Mods, I won't be too much longer. Let's do um let's do map time. Wait. Just gotta find it. Map time, everyone. So I'm going to go here. And here. Right. Damn. Thank you so much. FJ55 Ryan. I appreciate that so, so much. Cremation is the cheapest option. Maybe they're all just poor. Maybe that's true. Okay. So here we go. Moonflower Co op. One more time. Map time for Kylan Crystal. This is where Kylan worked. And that's where she was on August 12th. Then we go very close. Did you see how close that was to world famous Woody's Tavern? Just look at it. It is so close. Up here, we've got the Moonflower Co-op. And down here, we've got world famous Woody's Tavern. Oh, damn, we're like right <laughs> in the parking lot. So there we go. You can see this is the Moonflower Co-op. We've looked at this before just in relation to the Bowen Motel, which is obviously just on the other side there. I mean, maybe you said maybe Gabby tried to buy weed from Kylan. Maybe. And then what went wrong? That's the question. Okay, so we've got that. And now let's go again. To here. There we go. This is the last place that they were seen alive. Have you guys seen the CCTV footage of it? I have to check back for replay. I have a football game to watch. <laughs> Enjoy your football game. I'll do my best not to be too much longer, okay? So here we go. We've got Woody's Tavern here. And now if we go, so this is the last place they were seen on August 13th, leaving around 9 or 9.30. They said no one followed them out. And then, of course, we've got the campsite, which was here. This is where they were found. So they said they literally camped in the spot. This isn't their van or car or anything. It's just that's where they were camped. And I put this pin here because Kylan was found in the creek. A lot of articles, they say both ladies were found in the creek. So all I've read is that Crystal was found nearby, like near to her. This is the Whispering Oaks Lodge over here. One eighth of a mile away. They were also found in the two foot creek.
and there was a oh there we go and there were 150 yards only 150 yards from uh i say only it's far ish but not far 150 yards from the paved loop road so here they drove you know you can drive there and go here so they were not found far from this road you know so yes that's how that looks you said, I thought maybe a drug deal gone wrong, but nothing was really obviously taken from the home site. Doesn't seem so. I feel like there were two people involved. They were not lazy women and both hiked and they were active. So there was a chance they would have fought back. I mean, it's very interesting, right? So weird. They were all connected together in one place, right? Moonflower and now all dead. It is so weird. Yeah, Google Maps. I wonder how often they update their photos. Me too. I thought Brian was at the motel for two nights. He was he was um, allegedly booked in for two nights, but do we know if he even stayed there for even one night? We don't know. But yes, this is where, unfortunately, they were found. So I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I'm going to now. Wait. I want to... Mods, are we okay? <laughs> Going a little overtime every time tonight. So much so. So the teen, the teen that was that shot Kylan's uh, brother, they say teen was justified in shooting dead his friend 15 because he thought he was an intruder when he knocked in his bedroom window. The jury rules. Just in case anyone had a question about that, he didn't get charged with murder. Okay. So there's a whole thing about that. If you want me to do an episode about that sometime, I can do that. And then I want to show you this. This would be a great, this would be a great end thing to show you. If I can. Everything's getting all stuck. Hold on. Wait, let's just show you this one. Which was, you know, what they were saying is he was too close. He was creeping them out. And if they were right there, so around this vicinity or so, I'm thinking. And that's my thoughts: is that he camped inside that. I mean, I don't know, but I, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's the thing: is was it just one? We we just don't know. Like, did the creepy guy end up with a friend that showed up? Yeah. The problem is we don't even know where this person was camping next to them. So That's... that area right there, mm -hmm. I mean, he could have been camped inside that. Right. So this is uh, footage from, I need to make a Twitter account, but this is from Cindy Sue Hunter. And you know the stone cross they made for Gabby? Um, well, Kylan and Crystal's family also made a stone memorial for Kylan and it's Crystal. For me to just come up here. <laughs> yeah, it this was. This is the first time I've been here since I found them. Oh, really? It's yeah, been a while then. Yeah, it's it's been pretty. Uh, yeah, it makes you scared. Yeah. Cindy Sue. Sorry. Okay, now I'm going to take So there is their stone memorial. Um, thank you so much for that uh, super sticker. I really appreciate it. And Robin says, true, Grizzly Books, true crime. Someone said they are sending some of Crystal's ashes to be put with Kylan. <gasps> that gives me so much peace. You have no idea. Sure. To be separated like that. Goodness. Horrible, horrible. So, yeah, we've got that. And then the last thing I just want to show you, and then I will call it a night because otherwise I will be here all night. I could show you so many things. <laughs> could be here all night, guys. <laughs> I actually just want to do this one. Wait, just this one. And then I want to show you one more thing. So this is the final CCTV footage. Let me just take the, <laughs> thank you for that. Chat off like this and look here. So that's Kylan and Crystal.
We're almost there, 20 more seconds. But this is the final footage scene of them alive at Woody's Tavern. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Schmitty. Thanks to you soon. I resume the watch this talks. Absolutely. I'm going to release a lot more than just every Wednesday. I'm planning to make a whole bunch of videos so that I can actually work through the Chris Watts discovery documents. So if anyone's interested in that case, I'm still very much working on that as well. So let me know. Now I've got one more thing to show you and then mods, don't worry, I'm almost done. Why does the camera follow her like that? It's weird, right? I also wonder why does it tilt up and then follow her like that? What 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 is that? What goes on there? It's weird. <laughs> good spotting, good spotting. I want to show you this video from the Doll Funeral Chapel. I'm going to put the sound off. I actually had a song prepared for you, but now it can't play through StreamYard. Damn it. But I'm going to put it off just to show you this. They say in loving memory, because I don't know if YouTube will like this music. You know, sometimes they're like flag and then they'll shut down the stream. You said the cook, I tell you, right? Shame. Look at her. So cute. So this is what the funeral home has prepared um, in loving memory of Kylan and Crystal. You said so many of my questions answered. Well, that's great. You say, boo, don't go. Oh, I can be here. I can carve it right up. <laughs> Some of these pictures I haven't seen before. So I thought it was really great to see them. What do you think? <laughs> Thank you so much. I will in a moment. I'm just so like, <laughs> shame. Look at all these pictures. Oh no, it's so cute. <laughs> I'm awake, Mike, I'm awake. I'm so sorry that I don't have, I have a song that I was going to play that would have matched this very well, but I don't want to play this song that's on here because YouTube is like, oh, music, we shut it down. And then I'll, I won't even be able to say goodbye. I'll just be like, shut down. It's just nice to see the photos. So here you can see on the left-hand side, Kylan at school. Oh no, that is the cutest picture in the world. Look at it. She was very happy working there as well. Yeah, exactly, Dano. Copyright! <laughs> if they hear me play music, they're like... Mm. In the beginning, I was certain. Right, Cynthia, who knows, who knows? Such a tragic story. Yeah, this is such a sweet tribute. Man, Foggy Morn, you are carving it up. Thank you so much for your support for this channel and for the work that I do. I really appreciate it. Gabby would have so liked Kylan. Shame. Who are these photos? They make me sad. I'm looking at you guys chatting. If you can handle this, I already handled this this afternoon when I went through it. And I'm like, don't cry again on camera. 
Shame. It's kind of like a moment of silence, huh? Without any of the music. And I do email these funeral homes. I did as well for Gabby Petito's tribute. Just never hear back from them. Like, may I please share this? So that doesn't mean I don't have permission. I mean, it's a tribute to them. So I'm pretty sure to highlight this case and everything, I don't think that Sean Paul Schulte will have a problem with this. But I just wanted to show you this. It's just so nice to see all these photos that we haven't seen before. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Type A's can go all night. Gisler would make a great cop working midnight shifts, right? Lieutenant Peter Pronzo, when I was in New York, I used to stay awake for three nights at a time by choice. <laughs> it's the city that never sleeps, but it's also me that never sleeps, <laughs> especially in New York. I hope to come back to New York uh, next year. That's a dream of mine, a goal. They're such nice pictures, right? I haven't seen any of these pics before I found this today. I'm like, oh my word, they made a tribute. So sad we have to make so much noise. Yep. Nikki, I agree. I've got connections now, right? <laughs> you say me as well. <laughs> me too. Lisa, I, I don't know. I kind of agree with you there. The witness doesn't have anything to lose about that restaurant, but uh, the restaurant does. Oh, man, these pictures. Wow. So young. Such a short life. We need a grizzly meetup in New York. Oh, my word. I would literally die for that. <laughs> Absolutely. Wish I had a grizzly jet to fly there. <laughs> One can dream, huh? She could have been a model, such a tragedy. Connect the Instagrammers to both killings. They were in both places. Yay, Larray. I would be there for New York. Hell yeah, me too, me too. Thank you, yeah, thank you. Uh, Didi, this is great, right? This is... I like this without the music, silence, and their photos, right? New York party time when you come to New York. Oh, my word, I'd be so excited. I would love to meet yourself, Rochelle, Lieutenant Peter Pronzo, Bill Cannon, Phil Grimaldi. Who else is in the house? <laughs> Larray will be there. It is true that that rope matches the same type of twine, but it's pretty common twine. But yes. Shame. Yeah, we really do have to. She looks like Gina Davis. A little bit, huh? I know. If you use the hashtag um, that Kylan's dad uses, that can help this case maybe get some more traction and exposure. It's hashtag justice for Kai Cry. It's K-Y-C-R-Y. Just hashtag justice for Kai Cry. I've got it in my description box as well. 
But if you can use that, that would be great. Wow, that's such a beautiful photo. Yep, so that's what we got. Um, whew. That's very sad to watch, right? I'm going to make sure to bookmark this page so I never lose it. Got a lot of bookmarks, you know. Okay, so the one more thing. Only one more thing. I'm so sorry. It's one hour, 40 minutes ago. Hey, mods, if you got to sleep, go sleep. I just want to show you this because I forgot to do this, uh, which is here. So if we go here and we go to more info, we can actually look inside Moonflower like this. It does look like my kind of store. I love stores like this. Gluten-free lemon poppy seed muffins and vegan orange chocolate chip pecan muffins. Oh, my word. Blackberries and raspberries. Goodness. Those sandwiches look good. <laughs> JC, I know. <laughs> Sleep? What's that? I know you're here with me, JC. We are in Florida time. <laughs> Thank you to all the mods for staying here. It's so, so nice. If any of you need to go, that's okay. It's okay. My husband is probably wondering, where the heck am I? And Fury, the cat, will be so angry with me for being so late. <laughs> but isn't the store the cutest? Oh, my word. Look at all the teas. The yogi. I've never had yogi bedtime tea. I've heard about it. I've never had yogi tea before. I know it's a very American thing, right? Okay, Kathleen, you say we're good. <laughs> yeah, New York is my favorite city in the whole world. I've been there lots, right? I, I, my husband proposed to me in New York. My goodness, I love New York so much. Don't get me started on New York. Look at all these nice chocolates. Burnt caramel. So this was the Moonflower Co-op. So yes, that's where Kylan worked. Damn, they got a lot of pictures going on here. Ah, thank you so much. You say, I'll send you some tea. That's so sweet. I have a P.O. box. I got my very first box the other day, everyone. It was so nice. I'm going to put the pajamas on later. Okay, so that's there. And let's just quickly look at the next one, which is Woody's Tavern. And let's go inside. We got a drink. This is what it looks like inside. Do not park at the Moab Diner. You will be towed. Mm -hmm. Parking lot along the fence belongs to the tavern. Thanks. <laughs> yep, this is where they spent their last night. Which really sucks. You know, with what happened to them, it's so terrible. You have some yogi tea on your counter and you say yogi tea is delicious? That's so nice. I've never had yogi. <laughs> I'm feeling FOMO right now. Okay, who this guy? Coldest beer in town, guaranteed. <laughs> I don't see any dewdrops on the glass. Is it really that cold? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Thank you for sharing that justice for Kai Cry. Thank you. This one. Oh, damn, they're making me hungry. Stop it. <laughs> okay, this guy is so chilled out right here. Pretzels. Blue drinks and pretzels. Look, this place has got me sold. I really want to go to Moab one day. I'll be like, all right, Brian Enton, you were there, huh? Guess who's there next? Grizzly. <laughs> Gizzle K carving up Moab. <laughs> Getting the people to talk. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not throwing shade at him. I'm just saying I would just sit there and be like, anyone want a waffle? <laughs> Who wants to have a waffle with me, huh? Blue drinks. I love playing pool, but I don't go to bars anymore. Pool is nice. Pool is pretty cool. So 
No, 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 no. Remove that. <laughs> Sorry. There I am. Okay. Moab is great. Yup, yup. <gasps> You've been to Moab? Yeah, I've literally made a friend that uh, is one of the grizzlies that lives there. And he shows me such cool stuff, like videos of it, maps of it, like tells me about the locals, what goes on there. It's so cool. I love it so much. So, one, I don't know what's going on here. Asking you if you enjoyed the show, please vote on the poll. Um, lots of old hippies in Moab. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. I just want to make sure that I missed something here. Okay, so that was about the brother. I'm just going to bookmark this in case you guys ever want to know more. The brother who died. Also, if you look at the Moonflower Instagram page, there's also pictures of Kaylin on there because she worked there, right? And they said the Moonflower family is heartbroken to share the news of the recent tragic passing of one of our dear employees, Kaylin Schulter, as well as her wife, Crystal Beck. Kaylin worked at Moonflower as a cashier and amazing hat model for the last four years and was often the first friendly face many of our owners and patrons encountered as they walked in the door. Her genuine kindness, radiant energy, and tireless work ethic touched the lives of countless people and will be deeply missed by Moonflower and the Moab community. So if I show you this one here, don't mind the ads, but this is one of the ones from the Instagram posts. Can I click on it? I don't know. So this is how they shared it. So many damn adverts popping up everywhere here. Moonflower Community Co-op. All right. You have a friend in Pakistan that does it for you. <laughs> it's so nice that you can join the live. So I'm going to close this window as well. I'm just about done. They talked about the creepy guy. Got that. Okay. I worked through it all, people. I worked through it all. All the notes. Thank you. I never knew. I can't believe how the time goes. Oh, my word. Oh my word. <laughs> the time just went and went, huh? Let's see. 99% said, yes, you enjoyed the show. And 1% and said, no. <laughs> That's okay. That's what the poll's for. Is the poll in the community tab? The poll is actually on the chat box. It should be somewhere on the chat box. If you exit the chat box, hit the like button, and then come back to the chat box, maybe then it'll activate you seeing the poll. Time for the grizzly to hibernate. That is true. Right now it's 1.47 a.m. I'm still be carving it up. <laughs> the queen of carving. I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. I hope that you learned something, at least something. Learned something new, saw something new. I hope that I did shine a bit more of a light on this case. I'll keep doing it. As I say, if uh, Jason Jensen, the PI, is watching, Sean Paul Schulte, Cindy Sue Hunter, friends in Moab, the aunt, who else? If anyone wants to come onto the show with any of the cases I talk about, you are invited. Please contact me, grizzlybookstruecrime at gmail.com. So yes, good night to Giza. That looks like a young Miyasara. Got to look at that name. I must become a member. In membership, just so that you know, let's waffle a bit. In membership, what you get is uh, basically, especially the Superstar Grizzlies, you basically get like walks in the forest with me like I did today. A walk in the forest, okay, right here near my house. I walk in the forest and I talk a bit more about why I like true crime, things like that. What got me into it. All kinds of stuff like that. Personal stories, deep dives, deep dives on the Gizzard K <laughs> case files. <laughs> Thank you so much, all of you. You said, what did I miss? <laughs> 1.48 p.m., that is. It's actually 1.49 a.m. for me in the morning because I'm in the Netherlands. I'm in Europe. Um, it's 1.49 a.m., so almost 2 in the morning for me. You said, I did learn some things. Thank you so much. I'm so glad. Gizla owns the night NYPD street crime unit. I wish, I wish. You know, in New York, I used to walk past the NYPD there and be like, oh, man. One day, huh? But I mean, <laughs> too old now. I'm in the Netherlands. I'm South African. I mean, damn. I met an FBI dude at a drone conference and I'm like, can I work for the FBI? <laughs> 
And he's like, let me give you my contact details for the embassy, the U.S. embassy in South Africa. And he's like, maybe you could work for the FBI unit there, but you can't. you got to be a U.S. citizen. Anyone want to give me that citizenship? <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to stay up late with you guys. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to the Wrench Army, all the mods. You've been absolutely fantastic as always. I really appreciate all your help. Um, yeah. Thank you for everyone being here and supportive. No, there was no ugliness tonight. Not really. Night owl, right? I did hear about Jason Landry and I will be covering it. I've I've received a lot of emails. I've seen that Brian Enton talked about it. I will be talking about it as well. I'm just uh, catching up on lots of things, right? Hit replay and live read. So for those of you, one more thing. If you wonder where are the closed captions, where are the subtitles on this? I, don't, I can't activate it on live streams, but once I'm finished with the live stream and the video is processed, you should be able to see it. I wish you all a wonderful night. Thank you so much. On your way out, let's look if you were naughty. Not really. There's 842 likes. There's 1,046 people here. If the other 200 or just less than 200 people could please hit the like button, I would really appreciate that. That would be so awesome. Hit the like button. Carve it up. Now it's time to take that uh, blazer off, right? Take the blazer off <laughs> and uh, hopefully get some sleep. That's a good idea. Tomorrow... I won't be live streaming tomorrow night, but I will be launching a premiere. I'm going to talk more about the Jelani Day case. And on Sunday, I'm doing a fundraiser. I know it's Halloween. It might seem weird to some of you, but to me, it's like Gabby's last post was like, happy Halloween. It was a final post on Instagram that possibly someone else did, right? But I'm doing a fundraiser um, of my own on Sunday. Lieutenant Peter Pronzo will be there as well. So be excited for that. Phil Grimaldi might pop in and a few other guests might pop in as well. So please join us on Sunday as well. Just look at my homepage. Hit the set reminder thing, you know, then you'll know what's happening in your time zone or not. I'll see you soon. Um, I appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for sharing justice for Kai Cry. Absolutely. Sleep tight. Stay safe all. I really appreciate you. Let's put the outro on.